Hey guys, welcome back to another Pokemon Sword and Shield video. Today, I'm just going to be flooding you guys with a ton of information about Max Raids. Hopefully, some of this information will be helpful and new to you. A big shout out to Matt Ukenna for giving me a lot of this information to relay it to you guys and hopefully make your Max Raiding experience a better one. With that being out of the way, let's jump into some tips and tricks. First, a raid can end in two different ways. The first is if your side is KO'd four times total. So for example, if I faint two times and then two of my friends faint once, then the battle will end. The other way is if the raid goes over 10 turns. Once that happens, the raid will also end. If a Pokemon is knocked out, it will be MIA for one turn and then will be revived automatically. During this one turn of being MIA, you can cheer your allies on for potential boosts, such as boosted crit rates, stat boosts, reflect, and light screen. However, sometimes your cheering will do nothing. Now let's talk about barriers. These are the little red bars that appear in the middle of a raid battle. These usually are only seen in tier 2 or higher raids, and you will also see that they range from 2 to 5 segments in length. Now while this barrier is up, any regular damaging move, no matter how strong or weak it is, will always break one segment of that barrier off. So when this is up, it's smartest to use your weakest move while that barrier is still up to save PP. Unfortunately, multi-hit moves, such as Icicle Spear or Pin Missile, will still only break one bar of that barrier. However, when you're Dynamaxed, max moves will break two bars of the barrier. Once you do break the barrier, the raid boss will lose defense and special defense. It is worth noting that a boss can set up multiple barriers throughout a raid. Oh yeah, and raid bosses do have abilities, nothing is unchanged in how abilities work. Anyway, let's talk about Dynamax. So for your side, you get one Dynamax for the whole battle. In other words, once one person Dynamaxes, no one else can. With that being said, the order of opportunity for Dynamaxing is determined by who joined the raid lobby in what order. So, for example, if I join first to a raid lobby, then someone else joins second, and then third, and then fourth, I, as the first person, will have the opportunity to Dynamax on turn one, then the second person in turn two, the third person in turn three, fourth person turn four, and then if the fourth person still has not Dynamaxed, turn five, it will loop back around to me. Once someone Dynamaxes, like I said though, no one else can, so use it wisely. While you are Dynamax, be sure to check all of the different max moves that you have and the different special effects of each max move. So for example, the max move Max Flare will set up the sun. So if you have a team of fire types next to you, or if you have someone on your side that has Solar Beam or Solar Blade, it would be a really good idea to use Max Flare and set up the sun. Another example is Max Overgrowth, which sets up grassy terrain. You can give that Pokemon with Max Overgrowth the Terrain Extender to make the terrain last for 8 turns instead of 5. So overall, it's a really good idea to become familiar with your team's Max moves and kind of plan accordingly and use them to your advantage. And while we're talking about Max moves, the Raid Boss usually will use Max moves, however, it can still use regular moves. For example, you may see a Raid Boss use Max Overgrowth, but also use Giga Drain. Oh, and if that raid boss does knock out a few Pokemon, it can sometimes nullify your Pokemon's abilities and revert any stat changes that you may have put in place. Something to be really careful of. For all the shiny hunters out there, if the raid boss is shiny, it will appear as shiny in the battle with sparkles too. However, it's currently presumed that the odds, the shiny odds of raid bosses are still 1 in 4096. Another random tidbit, if you do not fill your group with four people, the game will automatically fill the remaining slots with NPCs. So if you have two players, there will be two NPCs. If you have three players, there will be one NPC, and so on and so forth. Now this is pretty cool. The number of stars that the raid is will guarantee that many guaranteed perfect IVs on that Pokemon. Except for five star raids. But one star will give you one guaranteed flawless IV, 2 will give you 2, 3 will give you 3, 
and four and five will both give you four guaranteed flawless IVs, which is really awesome. Now, if you're thinking of catching the raid boss, just know that none of them are 100% catch rate. Obviously, the lower tier ones are going to be easier, but they are not 100%. Also, some Gigantamax raids are version exclusive. For example, Dreadnought is sword exclusive. But despite this, sword players can invite shield players to version exclusive raids and vice versa shield to sword exclusive raids via the YCOM. You can invite players in. That's really cool. Oh, and one more thing on the whole end of the raid thing. After every KO that is done to your team, there will be a corresponding text box that will appear. So after your team is KO'd once, it will say, the storm raging above you is growing stronger. After two KOs, it will say the storm is growing even stronger. After three KOs, it will say the storm is getting too strong to withstand. And after the final KO, it will say that you were blown out of the den. So now let's talk about building out your max raid team. First things first, you guys should know about Dynamax levels. These are different from your normal levels and will determine what kind of an HP boost you get when you Dynamax. You could be as low as level 0 and as high as level 10. As you see on the screen right now, the lowest boost that you get when you Dynamax is a 1.5 multiplier, and it can go as high as level 10 with a 2 times multiple of your current HP. So you want to make the most of this. To grow Dynamax levels, you need to use Dynamax candies, which you get from doing max raids. If you get to level 10, like I said, that's a 2 times multiple on your HP. That is double your HP. Make sure that you use these Dynamax candies to get the most out of your Pokemon and the most out of your Dynamaxing. Next up are held items. These work just like in a normal Pokemon battle, so use them. Get some competitive items, maybe a Life Orb or Leftovers or a Scope Lens. Whatever you think fits your Pokemon, find something that works because held items are just like in normal battles and you should be using them. Lastly, we get to talk about the actual composition of your max raid team. Of course, you know that you can only battle with one Pokemon in a max raid, at least from what you can contribute. However, if you want to build a team that you can run around the wild area with and just do a ton of max raids with, well, you could do that too, and I think that's really cool. So just like in competitive battling, you can experiment with so many different kinds of teams, and what I'm going to share with you guys right now is just a foundation and you guys can experiment with tons of different combinations and try all different kinds of Pokemon and moves and whatever you want and that's the fun of this is that you could try whatever you want and see what works what doesn't work and try and do something that's unconventional but like I said I'm gonna give you guys the foundation to work off of as someone who knows a little bit about what it takes to make a good max raid team ideally a perfect max raid team is a team that is diverse and will allow you to have a specific Pokemon for any situation. So the first thing that you really want to account for is making sure that you have a mix of Pokemon that hit very hard, both physically and then others that hit hard specially. For example, if you have Inteleon on your team, this thing has 125 special attack. That is amazing. That is so good. And it also has some pretty good physical attack. However, if you're facing a Pokemon like Clefable, for example, that is more specially defensive, it may not be as smart to use Inteleon. It, it may do fine. But if you get something that is more physically offensive, since Clefable has lower defense, that would be really helpful and you would be able to do more damage to it. So the point here is that you want to have a few team members that will hit very hard physically and some that hit specially so that when you see a Pokemon that you know Oh my goodness, this Pokemon is really going to tank physical hits, but not special hits, or vice versa. You have a specific answer to that Pokemon. If you see a raid, like a 5-star raid, and you're like, Oh crap, how am I going to defeat this thing? Feel free to look up its base stats and see, Wait, okay, hold on. I could use one of my physical mons. Or wait, I could use one of my special mons. Like I said though, there are no explicit right or wrong answers. You should also have one or two bulky Pokemon, or more, if that's your kind of playstyle, on your team. And that's what's so fun about this. You can make the team how you want it. Like I said, my advice though is just to make sure that you have that mix. If you have a team full of physical Pokemon, and you face Pokemon that are all physically defensive, like a Steelix in a raid, 
you might not be looking too good. Now, the next thing you really want to pay attention to is your type coverage. If you can get a perfect balance of physical and special absolute beasts while also having a variety of moves on each of them, then you're looking really good. You'll have an answer to everything that you see at all different tiers. So take advantage of all of the TRs that are in the game now. As you earn them from battling in raids, they're really good and they can get you a lot of diverse moves on your team really fast. Now, there are so many great resources and references that you can use to build these teams, and I have a couple for you guys right now. So, on Maryland.com, I'll link this down below, he has a team builder that allows you to enter in all of your different team members, and then see how many total weaknesses and resistances that they have. Now, while this isn't as important since you're not using your whole team, you can kind of see which Pokemon you have more answers to, and which you have less to in terms of resistances, so be sure to check that out. I will also be linking down below Maryland's Pokedex page for Pokemon Sword and Shield. I do think this is going to be really useful for you guys in looking up base stats for specific Pokemon, mainly because you will see for every Pokemon listed that their strong stats are going to be bolded and enlarged. So especially anything over like 100, 110, that is where you start to get some really powerful stats. And this website right here, you guys will see, makes it really clear and hopefully makes it a little bit easier to build your team out. So to sum things up, you want definitely some answers to physically bulky Pokemon, specially bulky Pokemon, and don't be afraid to experiment with other kinds of Pokemon too. It's okay to use bulky Pokemon, it's okay to try things that you think will work, but also having type coverage will be very important. The bottom line is you want an answer to every different kind of raid boss, and that is what makes an amazing raid team. Anyway, that is the video. My goodness. I hope this information overload was helpful. If it was, hit that subscribe button, ring the bell for notifications, and hey, we'll see you guys in the next video. I appreciate y'all. We'll see you next time. Peace.